in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can use ChatGPT, Airtable, and a bunch of no-code tools to automate all of your social media marketing posts. So without further ado, let's get into it. Hey friends, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we're going to continue on where we left off last week with booknotes.ai. And we're now going to set up a workflow that will allow us to generate social posts for platforms like Instagram or Twitter using AI and no-code tools. Now the tools that we're going to be using to make this workflow happen is for starters, Airtable, which we are going to be using as our content calendar. Then we're going to be using chat GBT to generate the text that you'll see on our social posts then we're also going to be using a tool called placid to create all of the instagram images that we'll be posting then we'll of course also be using make to schedule our posts and to generate our posts and then of course we will have instagram where we will be posting the finished product now, just in case you missed the last video that I created on book notes, it is a landing page generator for my favorite books. And all of the content is created using ChatGBT by OpenAI. So if you wanna see exactly how the site was created, jump back to the previous video. It will add a lot of context to the workflow that we're gonna be setting up today. Now, before we get into it, in case you are new here and you want to learn more about building these types of sites with no-code tools or tools like ChatGBT, then head on over to my website, sign up to my newsletter. I create a whole bunch of tutorials that don't actually make it onto my YouTube channel. So if you do want to dive deeper, all of that content will be there for you and I'll notify you by email. I'll leave a link in the description down below, but with all of that out of the way, let's get straight into it. Okay, so first of all, what are the key things that we're going to have to do in order to make this happen? So whenever you use these types of AI tools, what I typically like to do is to actually jump into the actual playground and experiment with different prompts so that then when we dive into setting up the workflow, I know exactly what to tell ChatGPT free. And after we have successfully identified what prompts we're gonna have, what we'll do is we'll start setting up our workflow that will create all of the content for our social post. So what we're gonna need is first of all, the text which will be generated through our GTP free prompt. And then we're also going to need to use some of the information that we've got inside of Instagram to create our social post. So I'm going to be keeping things super simple. We'll be having a gradient background. And then over the top of that, we will have the book cover. And then finally, we're also going to have to set up a workflow for scheduling the post on Instagram so that we don't send it all out at once. So with that to-do list ready to go, let's dive into the first step, which is to experiment with our prompt prompts in chat GPT. So typically the way I start off is by just adding a prompt and seeing what the results of this prompt would be once I send it to chat GPT. And so typically you can go in here, type out what it is that you want. I typically add my framework and then just like that, you'll see what the actual response is. And so later on, when you use the API and you specify your prompt, what I would do is I'd use exactly this prompt here and then just replace this dynamic variable. So for example, the four hour work week with a variable that sits inside of your table. And so if you want to see, okay, well, how exactly does this turn out? You would then just paste this in again and you just choose a different book. And so let's take um, the black swan as an example, hit the enter button again. And again, you'll see how epic this tool is and what um, kind of results you'll get from it. And so all of this content is generated by ChatGPT. It is absolutely game changing. And just having a look at the responses for these two Instagram posts, I'm super happy with it. And that is exactly what we're going to be using in our workflow. Okay, and so that now brings us to the second step on our to-do list, which is to create the workflow for generating our social posts. Now, the workflow that I'm gonna be going over here is quite similar to the workflow that I went over when I generated my summaries, but let's go through every single step. So first of all, the trigger is when I fire a webhook. And again, I won't go into the details of how exactly you do that because I've got a bunch of other videos on my website and on my YouTube channel that explain it. But basically what I'm saying here is whenever 
I changed the status for the field social post from being empty to generate, what will happen is Airtable Automation will run a workflow that will fire a webhook that will then basically tell Make that we are now ready to generate a social post. Now I pass through the dynamic value inside of my table that contains the Airtable record ID for each book. And that then brings us to the next step where we then ask Airtable to retrieve all of the information for the record with this Airtable ID. And so what Airtable will be able to do is just to simply go and look at all of the different fields. And so we'll be able to get the title, we'll be able to get the book cover and any other type of information that we might need. And so that is what step one and two is. Step number three is when we then start to generate our prompt using OpenAI. And so this again is something that is pretty straightforward to set up. Again, I'm not gonna show you due to API keys and that type of stuff, but all you need to do is jump in here, then basically take the prompt, the framework that you generated for your prompt, and then replace this value here with the dynamic variable that you're getting from your book title when you retrieve the record in the previous step. And so what you'll do is you'd simply put in this title here into your prompt and then hopefully what will happen is you will get a response similar to this. Now the next step in the equation is going to be to create the image. So if we head on over to Instagram, you can see here, we've got my book cover and then we have a gradient background. Now, in case you've never used one of these image generation tools, they are phenomenal. So basically the way that it works is that you create a template in a tool like this and then you can use dynamic values that are stored in a different database, so in my case, Airtable, to populate those fields with whatever you want. So in this case, this image that I've got on my social post is actually being pulled by the image inside of my Airtable record. Now, setting up a template in Placid is super simple. All you need to do is to just add a picture layer onto your canvas like this. And you can see here, I've got a picture layer. And then also you can add a static background but another thing that I decided to do is to add a dynamic background and so what I did is I just added another picture layer to the back I named it gradient so that then later on I can populate the gradient with different background images and then all you need to do to make sure that you can actually populate it with dynamic content is to ensure that the dynamic element symbol is turned on and so that way when you're making a call to the API Placid will know that you are all good with replacing this. And once all of that is done, all you need to do is save it and you'll be good to go. Now, just in case you are curious how I generate the gradient backgrounds, I just downloaded a bunch of gradient backgrounds from the internet and then I uploaded them to Webflow. And then dependent on the gradient theme that I pick, it will basically retrieve a different URL depending on what theme I am looking for. And so I simply used an if else statement in order to generate this. So it basically says if the gradient theme is dark, then use this URL. Otherwise, check if it has this gradient theme, use that URL. And that way you can dynamically change your gradient backgrounds at all time. And so all I did was I just made sure that I am rotating through them and then just like that, it allowed me to add a different background every single time. And so then when you go ahead and configure your Placid account, all you need to do is pick your template. So in my case, it's called the Instagram template. And then you just need to dynamically map the URL for the attachments that you have. So in my case, my gradient background, and then also my thumbnail for my book cover to its corresponding fields. And then as soon as you run your workflow, it will automatically pull in those values and generate the template for you. Okay, then there are three more simple little steps involved with this. So our text parser step is responsible for removing any line breaks from our GPT-3 response. And then in this step here, we are actually creating a record inside of our content calendar. So all of the responses that we receive from Placid and from OpenAI will be stored in here under the content calendar table. And I'm gonna be showing you that in a bit more detail in a second. And then finally, this is just a good practice. Whenever the workflow is completed, I also make sure to update the book record with a status of done so that I know that I have created a social post for it.
With all that being said, we have now managed to go through this entire workflow for creating our social posts. So let's jump into testing it. Now you could fully automate this process whenever you add a book to your workflow. I still just like to double check that everything is working the way that it is supposed to. Um, so I have a manual trigger, which is when my record moves into the generate view. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a book. So let's pick this one here. We'll click on generate and what this will do is start our workflows so the workflow is running in the background and you'll see any second how it gets triggered it makes the API call to OpenAI. It runs the workflow in Placid and then it will do the final steps with the text parser. And then we will see that our post has been added. So just like that, we have our social post. Now, what I like to do is to just review it. So just make sure that everything makes sense and that there is no funny stuff that happened with it. But as you can see, the actual social uh, post image or the Instagram image looks great. The text looks great as well. It has also added, um, uh, it's also added our um, hashtags that might be relevant here. I'm personally not that familiar with how to use hashtags effectively, but I'm just going to trust it for now. And now that I know that all of this works, now all I need to do is to just select the date when I am going to publish it. And so we're going to set it to the 22nd. And then all we need to do is just set it to scheduled and that will then move it to a view that basically is responsible for posting the post on the day and in order for us to make this work we're actually going to have to set up a second workflow that will allow us to schedule and post to instagram okay now the workflow here is super simple especially compared to what we just set up there are only three steps involved with it first of all make will check if a record moves into our view that is called ready to post now this um, view has two filters attached to it. First of all, the status has to be scheduled. And then the second thing is the post date has to be today. And so you can see in here, I've got a post date, which means that this record here will move into this particular view on the 14th of December. And so you can see here, it goes down every single day and every single day, this workflow will check at, let's have a quick little look. It will check at 6.45 PM New Zealand time if a new record is in there. And if it is in there, then what it will do is trigger the workflow post to our Instagram and then it will update the record with um, the post ID on Instagram and also an updated status of published. So what we're going to do now is we are going to test this workflow by simply taking a record from our content calendar table and changing the date to today. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to have to do is change our date to today. So we're going to change it to the 13th. And then we're going to make sure that our record moves into this view. And as you can see, just like that, our record has moved into this view. And now typically what would happen is every single day at 6.45 p.m. New Zealand time, this workflow will run, check whether or not there is a record in there. And if a record is in there, it will take all of the values, for example, the image and also the text and then post it to Instagram. So you can see here, I've simply mapped the photo URL, which is my square image, and then also the post. Now I also added a um, static value down here, which is specific to Instagram. So I said something like link in bio. Um, that way I can actually reuse my post on multiple platforms like Twitter or Facebook, and then just add a corresponding call to action in there. But with that being said, now that that record is in there, let's hit the play button, run our workflow. You'll see that it found a record. You can see that it is posting to Instagram. And now you can see that it's been updated. So let's go ahead and refresh our site. And you can now see, yep, a new post has been posted. You can see that it has our text as we generated it through uh, OpenAI. And just like that, we have managed to set up a workflow that pretty much automates all of our Instagram posts. And that is it. That is the workflow that allows me to basically automate the creation and posting of my Instagram posts. Now you can do this for every other platform as well. You might need to make some small little adjustments here and there. But if for example, you wanna post something to Twitter and you have to work within a certain character limit, then you can actually tell the API 
try to stay within the certain character limit and it will do exactly that for you now at this point let me know what else you want to learn about using these types of tools if you want me to do things like set up user accounts where people can like their books and that type of stuff let me know in the comments down below other than that if you are also working on something using these tools please let me know in the comments down below i'm always keen to hear what people are up to other than that thank you so much for sticking around for the entire video and i'll see you back here for the next one